Hey guys, it's Alex Bertson, the Manic Scholar, back again with another video. Uh, another video about Osho, or Bhagwan Sri Rajneesh, as he was known earlier. Most people know him as Osho now. Um, <clears throat> we're looking at his Vedic astrology chart. Uh, and if you don't know who Osho is, he, he was a guru. Um who uh, was from India and he he had a lot of, a lot of uh, teachings uh, that he that was recorded by him through lectures and stuff there's so many books by him um, he set up a commune in Oregon in the United States at one point um, but he died back in 1990 um, but yeah we're looking at his Vedic astrology chart um, I use Vedic astrology because it's, it uses a more accurate uh, calculation for the zodiac. Uh, it's actually a reflection of uh, where the constellations actually are. So wherever your sign placements are in this chart are actually the accurate ones. When you look at Western astrology, the calculation is off by 24 degrees. All the, all the placements are 24 degrees ahead of where the actual placements are astronomically. So um and there's so much more to vedic astrology uh than just like a sun sign thing or just your birth chart even i'm going to talk a little bit about his navamcha chart at, towards the end um which is a, a, another aspect of the it's another important chart to look at uh it talks more about your dharma and your relationships and later life um so yeah let's get into his his birth chart um he's a this is the chart on the left on my screen. This is the birth chart, and the one on the right is Navamsha. So for right now, we're just talking about the one on the left. Um, he's a Taurus rising. So, you know, things like uh, wealth and uh, beauty and art uh, are big themes for him. Um, his, uh, his son is in Scorpio. Um, which is one of Mars's signs, um, which usually indicates some kind of occult ability. Um, it's about ego, death, and transformation, and and surrender and stuff like that. Uh, but they usually have very mysterious. Um, but one of the most interesting aspects of his chart is that his eighth house is loaded with planets there's five planets in his eighth house in sagittarius it's mars mercury venus moon and saturn are all in sagittarius in the eighth house so i'll talk about both sagittarius and the eighth house what those both mean so sagittarius is the sign that's focused on developing their own uh higher truth and understanding of life. Um, and they want to teach what they their viewpoint is. Um, it's ruled by Jupiter. So it's has, it's a very spiritual kind of thing. Um, but Sagittarius is archetypally like a spiritual teacher. Uh, kind of guru um, energy going on. Um, which fits with like the, the ninth house. Usually with ninth houses. Um, similar significations as Sagittarius. Um, but yeah, all these planets are in the eighth house in his chart. And the eighth house is the house of the occult. It's all things hidden, the things that are hidden from view. Uh, so it's more mysterious things. It's the metaphysical. Um, it also has to deal with uh, psychic ability, intuition, things like that. Um, it also deals with uh, the ego uh, death, ego death and surrender. So it's about letting go and surrendering to uh, the higher force within yourself. Um, but yeah, it's a very mystical, occult related thing. It also is represents the money that you get from partnerships. And it seems like what happened in Osho's case is you know, he, he was part of this commune. He started this commune. 
and he was getting all kinds of like things from his um through his followers like people were giving him rolls royces he had over a hundred rolls royces um so there's a, a wealth aspect there that's really big that he just gets wealth through through unearned means is a, a big signification for all this here um this is the most loaded eighth house i've ever seen so <laughs> it's it's pretty nuts <clears throat> but it makes sense because he was you know he was a mystic and a guru and the sat all these plants and sagittarius represent that and the eighth house deals well with the mystical uh metaphysical and the occult so that's kind of the biggest thing i see here and it's really important this house is really important because uh his, his uh, ascendant is Taurus, which is ruled by Venus, and Venus is in the eighth, so he's directly connected to this house, um, as by with his chart ruler being there. And then if you look at his career, which is uh, which has you got to look at his tenth house, and Aquarius is in his tenth house, so you got to look at where Saturn is, and Saturn's in the eighth house, so his career is connected to this occult ability. Um, and then you even look at his seventh house and see his relationships. Um, you look to see the ruler of Scorpio, which is what's in the seventh house. And that would be Mars. And Mars is in the eighth house. So, like I'm saying, this, it's a huge thing. Um, big signification to have all these planets in the eighth. Um, one thing we can look at here, though, is also that we got to look at the ruler of the eighth house, which is Jupiter. And Jupiter is in the third house in Cancer. Jupiter is exalted in Cancer. Um, so it's st strongest. It knows how to express its energy naturally uh, in that exalted position. Um, so there's a connection between his eighth house and his third house. So this could mean that he communicates about the occult. Um, and then, so, and Jupiter is a more of a spiritualizing influence, so it could be more of a spiritual thing that he communicates about in general with, with Jupiter in the third house. Um, but yeah, so he's connected to communicating about the occult. Um, you could say that with these connections here. Um, so another thing we could look at about his chart, um, well, the sun is in the seventh house. Um, this means that partnerships are going to be a really big uh, focus of his life. Because uh, sun is the indicator of the soul. Um, so a lot of partnerships uh, are going to be are going to be big, which makes sense for how things went. But his Atmakarika in terms of uh, the Jaimini system is Jupiter uh, because it's at the 29th degree. It's it's the planet at the highest degree out of all the planets. So his that's like his sole significator planet is Jupiter, which makes sense because he's, he's a teacher. Um, so that's pretty cool to see. We can also talk about his Rahu K2 axis a little bit. Um, his Rahus and Pisces, so he's moving more towards the spiritual, intuitive, um, emotional side of things, uh, more towards oneness, letting go of energy, and merging with the infinite is kind of the significations of Pisces. Virgo is more grounded in the world, more logical, analytical, breaks things down into pieces, so it's more about breaking things apart and seeing them in pieces. Um, to understand things deeply and logically by piece by piece is that's how it's kind of the opposite. Um, so he came from, from past lives, having more of a Virgo kind of energy focus, more of a logical intellectual focus. And then in this life, uh, go, going towards Pisces with this Rahu and Pisces is more towards the spiritual. As for the house placement, um, of Rahu and K2. Rahu's in the 11th house, so that means he's moving towards gains. It could be monetary gains. It could also be um, it's also related to friends and organizations and community. So that building is, is 
a big part of it, you know, being parts of an organization um, and having gains in general is a, is a very positive influence there to have Rahu there. It's a, it's a good placement for Rahu. Um, K2 in the fifth can indicate some kind of past life talent for spiritual things because K2 is very spiritual. Um, with that being in the fifth house, the fifth house is past life talent, also deals with creative self expression. So there can be some spiritual ways that he expresses himself. So that's kind of what I, we can see in his, uh, his birth chart. Um, just a couple things to look at in his Devamsha. Um, one thing we can see is his Atmakarika, which was Jupiter, is in the ninth house in Pisces. So it's in its own sign in the Navamsha. So it's really strong. Um, it's, it was exalted in the Lagna birth chart, and it's in its own sign in the uh, Navamsha. And the Navamsha ruler is the moon because he's a cancer rising on his Navamsha. Uh, his Navamsha Lagna is in cancer. Um, and his moon's in the fourth in the Navamsha. So this kind of suggests that uh, home and real estate, ashrams, things like that, are going to be a big, going to be a big area of life, um, of focus. So, and that's you know he did have ashrams. He had this whole land, like a whole city that he built with all his followers. So that kind of makes sense there. Um, his son is in the eighth. Eighth house in the Navamsha, so there's even more significations of uh, occult stuff going on. Um, so that was just a couple things you can see in his Navamsha. Um, so yeah, overall, you know, this is a very spiritual chart. Uh, there's a lot of strength towards gains, monetary gains, uh, wealth from unearned means. Um, He's really connected to the occult as being a Scorpio sun and having five planets in the eighth house. Um, very mystical, metaphysical. Um, Jupiter is his Atmakarika, his soul planet. So uh, spirituality is really big. And then Taurus, is, as a rising sign, indicates a focus on wealth um, and the arts, too. So... Yeah, that's, that's basically what I can see here. Um, very spiritual, metaphysical chart. Um, I'm going to do another video about Osho in his human design and Gene Keys charts. Um, just doing an overview of that real quick. Um, so you can check that one out when it comes out. I already did a video about his Michael Teachings chart, um, which tells about talks about his soul type and his soul age. He's a he's a sage in the old soul age, level seven. So he's, this is probably one of his last lives that he had as Osho. So go check that out if you want to learn more about that. Um, and uh, I'll be working on more of these videos next, next week. I'll be doing um, Ramana Maharshi through these three systems, through Michael Teachings, Vedic Astrology, and Human Design. So uh, you can wait for that to come out next week. Um, but yeah, I should uh, have another video uh, coming out in the next couple days. So uh, stay tuned for that. And if you like this content, please like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. Manic Scholar out.